What's up? Welcome back to the Metalhead Car Show. On this channel, we have ranked Metallica, we have ranked Iron Maiden, we have ranked Judas Priest, we have ranked Megadeth, we have ranked Halloween, but today we rank Manowar. Manowar is absolutely one of my favorite power metal bands. And this month, they're actually starting up their dual album tour where they're going to be doing Sign of the Hammer and Hail to England in its entirety. I was supposed to see the show in Brooklyn, I bought a ticket, then life changed, and I just can't go anymore. So if you want a general mission ticket and you see this video before November 30th, let me know, we can work something out. But anyway, today we rank Man of War. So we're only gonna be looking at the full length albums, but for having a career of an excess of 40 years, they put out 11 full length albums, and obviously today we rank them all. So enough dawdling and shameless self-promotion, let's get right into it. So we're starting last place, and last place goes to the Lords of Steel. Manowar is not like Metallica or Megadeth or Maiden Priest, where it's pretty easy to kind of guess what the last place album is going to be, but I find The Lords of Steel just to be kind of a weak album. Great production, has a couple bangers on it, but honestly I think so much of the album is just kind of skippable. I listen to Lords of Steel and Annihilation a fair bit, but frankly, I just don't feel the need to go back to this album. And frankly, because I don't really write scripts for anything I do, I'm kind of sitting here trying to think of something to say about it, but I kind of have nothing. Like, I find this album to be so kind of forgettable that I don't even know what to say about it. It's not without its bad songs, but it's definitely the weakest Manowar album. In 10th place, Into Glory Ride. Now, Into Glory Ride has some absolute bangers on it that I wish Manowar would actually pull out, like Revelations. Now, despite I do believe that Into Glory Ride is a notable step forward from where Battle Hymns was in regards of Manowar finding their sound, I do think it was still kind of locked in this biker metal sort of thing, and they didn't quite know where they're going yet. So the album's a little bit confused, the production's not amazing, it has some incredible songs on it, but I just can't call it the strongest album. Now I'd rather go listen to Into Glory Ride than I would uh, Lords of Steel, but there's just other albums I'd way rather spend my time listening to. Ninth place, and this is going to be the controversial one, but Warriors of the World. Now, Warriors of the World is one of Man of War's most successful albums. They spent so much time just fine-tuning this album to make it this a, absolute gem. And frankly, you can see exactly where the time went. This is a great album. Now, if I'm saying it's a great album, why am I putting it so low on the list? Call to Arms is awesome. The last four songs being Warriors of the World, Fight Until We Die, Hands of Doom, and House of Death. Awesome songs. But frankly, I just don't really care about much in the middle. And again, I respect the songs in the middle. I respect the diversity on this album. I'm never going to argue with that. But I also can't pretend like I really want to go listen to what's in the middle. I just listen to what's the beginning and what's at the very end of this album. It's going above the last two albums because the start and ending is amazing on this album. But again, there's over 50% of album I just ignore all the time. Not a lot of people are going to like this opinion, but that's my thoughts on Warriors of the World. Frankly, I thought it was going to go higher, but here we are. Eighth place, Hail to England. Now, Hail to England was a little bit closer in the direction Man of War was going. And this album is a little bit on the shorter side, but I do think it is a well thought through album. It is a good album. I'm not going to pretend like I don't think there's solos put into the album as a little bit of filler. But nonetheless, there's some great songs on this album. I just think there's better songs on other albums. Seventh place, we're going right back to the beginning with Battle Hymns. Now, people might find this to be the controversial one, but honestly, it isn't. That one's still coming up. Battle Hymns was Man War's first album, and... It's such a good album. It has some concert essential songs on it. It has battle hymns on it. This is one of Manowar's most diverse albums. And I don't think that was the plan. I just think that Manowar didn't exactly know where they're going. So they made some songs that were rock and roll. They made some songs that were biker metal. They made some songs that are a bit more on the epic side, like Dark Avenger. And then they made battle hymns, which is probably one of the most epic songs they've ever written. 
original version, 2011 version, there's no bad way of doing it. That song is incredible. So why is it going kind of in the middle of the list? Well, again, great album. The only reason it's going a little bit lower is it's just not fully thought through yet. And there's nothing wrong with that. It was the first album. It, there's no way it was going to be fully thought through, but there's just more albums that are. Now, I don't really go listen to William's Tale on this album, but honestly, everything else is solid material. Great album, but I do think there are better albums. Sixth place, and not everyone's gonna love it, but this is my list, not yours. Gods of War. Now, Gods of War was Man of War's first concept album. Some people love it, some people don't, but they put in so much work to make this album what it was. There's such a high production on this album. You can see how proud they were of this album. Like, there's some parts of Odin that were separated through the whole album, and some people might look at that as just filler, but they were proud enough of these vocal parts and guitar parts and organ and whatnot that they made they made it so people could just hear them by themselves. They didn't need to do that. Odin could have been its own thing. Odin could have just been an incredible song, but no, they had so much pride in that song that they wanted people to hear all these individual parts. Now the album's not just about Odin. It has one of the absolute fan favorites being Sons of Odin, which that song title has aged so poorly. <laughs> but also you got Die For Metal, you got King of Kings, you have Gods of War, like this is such a good album. I'm putting it above a lot of songs because I do think this is a really solid album, but I'm putting it a little bit lower than others just because much like Judas Priest's Nostradamus, I need to be in a certain mood to go listen to this album. It's not just an album I go turn on, but nonetheless, it is a great album. Fifth place, Louder Than Hell. Now, Louder Than Hell is kind of an interesting album because it's definitely a lot more dialed back than uh, The Tribe of Steel was, but it was definitely a bit more modern than The Tribe of Steel or Kings of Metal. This is truly an incredible Man of War album. Like, you had songs like The Power and Outlaw that were just so fast and in your face, like you got from the Tribe of Steel album. But you had songs like Courage that were a bit more ballad like, but very Man of War ballad. So it's still loud and proud and very in your face without being aggressive. There's such a good mix of songs on this album. Like, I think there's stronger albums, but. I don't think there's any Man War fans that say they generally don't like this album because no matter what era of Man War you like, this album kind of has it all. It's just all a bit more refined to make it make sense on one album. Excellent album. Fourth place, and nobody's gonna like this, The Kings of Metal. Now, The Kings of Metal is such a big step forward for Man War in regards of writing and production. You would hold male choirs on some of these songs. You have songs like Crown of the Ring, which is such a unique and kind of beautiful song, but while still making these incredible crowd essentials and fan favorites like Kings of Metal, like Hail and Kill, like Blood of the Kings, Wheels of Fire, like this album's so good. It's only going down a little bit because there are still some edgy bullshit from their first couple albums that made its way in here, like Pleasure Slave which they've played like twice, or at least it's documented they've played twice. And they didn't even re-record that song for the 2013 version of Kings of Metal. Which frankly, that tells me they're just growing up and they knew that song doesn't need to make its way back on the album. And it didn't get played live when they did the 2013-2014 Kings of Metal tour. But for the most part, I've really had nothing but good to say about this. So why isn't it going any higher? Frankly, there's just albums I want to listen to more. Frankly, there's a lot of songs in this album I love hearing, but there's a lot of other albums I love hearing more than Kings of Metal. Outside of Pleasure Slave and maybe uh, Sting of the Bumblebee, I don't really have anything bad to say about it, but also I just have more good to say about other albums. Third place, Sign of the Hammer. Now, I think for a while I said this, this was my favorite Manowar album, but as times went on, I think it's changed a little bit. But nonetheless, it's banger after banger after banger after Thunderpick, and then ending with a banger. Like, ending with Guyana was such a ballsy move for Manowar to some extent, 
because a lot of what Manowar writes about is ancient Greece and ancient Norse mythology. But then you have Guyana. Now, in the same album that does Thor, they do Guyana. Now, for those who don't know, I'm not going to go into full details about it because I'm not really sure how much I can say about it on YouTube. But go look into Jim Jones and Guyana and those who drank the Kool-Aid. But for those who already know, you know, the fact that they wrote a song about that six years after the events actually happened in Guyana was so ballsy. And also, it's the only time Manowar's written a song about kind of modern historical events, which in my mind makes it just such a unique song in every single way, along with having that absolutely berserk bass intro. But again, the album's more than one song, but the fact that I can just go dive into one of those songs means it's a bit more important to me. But again, Thor, Mountains, The Oath, All Men Play on Ten, Sign of the Hammer, Animals. This album's like so goddamn good. I need it on record so bad. Like, I love this album. I have nothing really bad to say about it other than I think Thunderpick's awful to listen to and I skip it every single time. But there's two more albums that have songs that I don't skip and are just a bit more refined. In second place, which this also gives away first place, but in second place, Fighting the World. Fighting the World has one of the biggest live show essential songs for Manor being Black Wind, Fire and Steel, but also having absolute fan favorites like Fighting the World and Defender. But also like, this album's kind of really diverse because you have this song as the opener being Fighting the World, which is metal in every way you want to look at it. And then you go to Animals, which I'm not going to call it glam, but it's definitely a bit, it's more fun. It doesn't take itself too seriously. It, like, it tiptoes on glam. And then you have Violence of Bloodshed, which could have been on like Exodus or Megadeth album. And you have Defender, which is such a vibe change from everything else on the album. And then you've Holy Wars, which is almost kind of a step forward towards where Man War is going, going into the fastest song in the set. And probably the fastest song they've written at this point being Black Wind, Fire, and Steel, which is actually the first Man War song I actually learned how to play guitar. I love this album. I was actually fortunate enough to get to see Ross the Boss play two songs from this album. Maybe yeah, two songs from this album when he was in Ottawa on the 2020 tour. But we have one more album that just tops it just a little bit. And that's Tribe of Steel. This is probably one of the heaviest Man War albums. It's full of diversity. It opens with a 28 minute song, which they have played live a handful of times, but also ending with like one of the cleanest and nicest ballads they've ever done. And having songs like Spare to the Cherokee, which is so different to everything they've ever done. And this is also the first Manowar album to have both a new guitarist and new drummer in the band, which I think also produced some of the fastest material of Manowar has ever written. I think it was a mix of this and Kings of Metal, which kind of formed the future of where Manowar is going. This is the fastest album. Kings of Metal may have been a bit more mature to some extent, I guess. But this is almost a goddamn thrash album to some extent. It's power metal, but... It's fast. And also looking at one of the bands that Manowar gets compared to now and then, we're now in the early 90s. I think Tribe of Steel came out in 1992, or if I'm wrong, it's on the screen. But looking at Halloween, they were in between Pink Bubbles Go Ape and Chameleon, seeing Manowar come out just balls to the wall and make Triumph of Steel. They were way ahead of some of their competition. Despite I only mentioned Halloween there, whatever, it doesn't matter. <laughs> anyway, Tribe Steel is an amazing album. There's no bad songs on it. There's so much diversity. But also, all the diversity actually works together brilliantly. Love this album. Don't care if it's a bad take. They knocked it out of the park with the Tribe of Steel. Anyway, that is my ranking of every single full-length Manowar album. I want to know, what do you think? Do you agree with my list? And if not, what is your top three Manowar albums? Let me know in the comments. Thank you all so much for watching. Like, subscribe, enjoy if you've seen. If there's another band you'd like to see me rank, let me know in the comments. But until then, I'll see you later.